So the parable of the sower, Matthew 13, verse 1 to 9, I'd say. So the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into the ship and sat the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. And some seed, and some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no depthness or deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scourged. And because they had no root, the withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear? Let him, let him hear. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So we see in this test, very, very powerful test, that it is a depiction of the infallible word of God and how the word of God has the capacity to transform hearts. How the word of God has the potentiality to bring about change when it is sold in the right environment when it is sowed in the right heart the infallibility of the word of god is so the whole uh, summary of this test is about the efficacy and the infallibility of the word of god hallelujah and so we see that this test starts and begin to let us know about the nature of the word the nature of the word it's a parable yet this is the revelation that the Lord puts in that parable and then the administration of it and then the condition with which it bears fruits and prospers so the word the nature and the word of God goes into an environment as you may into the heart of man and begin to bear fruit because the word of God is supposed to bear fruit in our lives hallelujah amen so I'm just giving a preamble so the sower whoever the sower is desires fruitfulness the Bible says the sower went forth whoever this sower is desires fruitfulness the sower has a seed in his hands and he has to go with an expectation that when I do go hallelujah when I do leave my house with this seed and I go to the field I'm expecting to be fruitful hallelujah if you're writing me writing it's gonna be deep <laughs> trust God I'm expecting to be fruitful what is our expectation today when we come before the Lord not just in this building now you know it could even be in our private worship our private space what expectation do we have when we come before the Lord do you recognize the seed that is in your hand do you recognize the potentiality that is in the seed that is in our hands. So this sower knew or uh, knows the potentiality of the seed that is in his hand. He knows that this seed has the capacity to sprout and then have leaves. He knew that this seed has the capacity to have branches and then sprout and then grow into a steady plant 
into a big tree. He knew that all he had to do was to leave his home and go to the field. Hallelujah. And some of us today, we've journeyed from, you know, miles to be here. Hallelujah. Because you are desiring fruitfulness. You are desiring growth. Even you are desiring a relationship. Even a deeper relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. So, and being born again, we are like a seed. We are like a seed. It's easy to just read the parable of the sower and, and lose the revelation that is in it. Being born again, we are like a seed. So 1 Peter 1, 23 talks about that we are born again, not of corruptible seed but incorruptible by the word of God hallelujah which live it and abide forever so when you are born again then that is fruitfulness the first place of fruitfulness of being fruitful is at redemption to be born again is fruitfulness. It starts from there. Before anything else, that will start to produce even more fruits. Hallelujah. And that is why we must be born again. In order to have, in order to grow in Christ. In order to be filled with the Spirit. In order to walk the walk of faith. That's why we have to be born again. That is the reason why the seed had to be planted. The sower could have just stayed at home, but the seed will not bear fruit. However, the soil that the sower is going to sow into does not have life in itself. So the life in itself is actually in the seed, not in the soil. Hallelujah. The life is in the seed, but not in the soil. But if the sower stayed at home, the seed will only just have life in itself, but it will not be able to produce or reproduce. So what the soil does, it, it gives that environment for the seed to penetrate. It creates the atmosphere where the seed can penetrate hallelujah and begin to sprout and as we journey further the bible let us know that this sower is christ i think it's verse 37 of matthew 13 hallelujah we're following praise god and we've been blessed verse 37 of Matthew 13. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the are we following? Is the is the son of man. He that soweth this good seed is the son of man. So the son of man as it relates to Christ. The son of man as it relates to him sowing as it relates to his incarnation, being made flesh, and as it relates to from that point where he begins to administer his calling in the land of Judea and preaching of the gospel. So that Jesus Christ went about sowing, and that sowing or whatever it's been sowed is the word of God. So the seed is the word of God. Hallelujah. The seed is the word of God. Or the seed is the gospel. And the soil is the heart of man. Like I said, it's a parable. And that is the revelation. And Jesus Christ himself, as we read even further, we see how Jesus Christ himself begins to explain what the soil is. 
what the seed is. The soil is our heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the seed is the word of God. So, and when God speaks to us, it comes in seed form. So his word to us is a seed. When God speaks to us, it comes in seed form. So that when it is rightly received, it will produce the fruit that it intended. Hallelujah. Lord, we receive your word today in our lives. We receive your word today that will bring about the needed change. That will bring about that transformation. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the seed that fell on the wayside. The seed that fell on the wayside. What is the Lord saying to us? What is the Lord communicating with us, to us, about this seed that fell on the wayside? Matthew 13 verse 4. Hallelujah. We are still together. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them. So what the sower did, literally, Sister Grace, left his home with the seed and went to the field. And begin to scatter the fields all around the fields. And as he did that, some of the seed overlapped the edges of the fields. And then they fell by the wayside. Some of the seeds overlapped the edges of the field and they fell on the rocky side. And why is this? Because I came from a family of farmers. <laughs> Praise God. And when we do go out to sow, we are very intentional where we want to plant our seed. Yeah, we map out where we want to plant our seed so that there will be no wastage of seed. You know, so and many times I had followed my grandma who is late now. You know, to the farm. And we planted corn and we planted maize and yam and bananas and everything. You know, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> and we are very intentional about how we do so. So that there will be no wastage. But in this particular test, it seems that this particular sower is a bit haphazard in the sense that he has gone to sow but he wasn't sowing in a structured way his sowing was a little bit unstructured unorganized as you may because you see where the seeds were just all over the place and when you look at the Israelites, when they go out to sow, this is actually what they do. They go and scatter the, the seed first before they start to plow. That's what they do. They go and scatter the seeds first before they start to plow. And so what's the revelation that God is giving us here because he is the planter or he's the sower of the seeds. Why does it seem now, if we kind of reason it, is God sowing haphazardly? Why is God not intentional about where he sowed this seed so that no seed will be received by the wayside? Amen? So that no seed will be received by the rocky side to the point where the seed is choked and trampled upon. Should God not know a little bit more better in how 
be souls. Now, this is the revelation that when God sows his seed, he sows his seed indiscriminately. It means that he is not careful how he sows. And seemingly, he is not structured how he sows. Are we following? And this means that when God sows, he sows to people who don't care about his word. Wayside seed. He sows to people who abuse his word. He sows indiscriminately to people who uses his word as curse words. He sows to people who do not care about his word. However, he still goes ahead and sow. And this is why you see some of the seed falls on the hearts of the wayside. Because you see people who come and receive the word, they hear the word, but they do not care about the word. They make a confession that they want Jesus but the truth of the matter is, it's a spurious confession. And that confession has no root in their heart. However, God still goes ahead and still sows indiscriminately. Are we getting it? Hallelujah. God still goes ahead and sows indiscriminately. Because it might seem like these seeds have been wasted because they are being trampled upon. But the truth of the matter is that God will accomplish what he wants to accomplish. Even though people reject his word, he still gave his word. <laughs> Praise God. Even though the people reject the seed, he still gave it indiscriminately. And so this is what happened to the wayside seeds because it, the seed that was sown in their heart has no place to germinate has no place to be fruitful. They come to the altar because they heard the good word, but yet they go home unchanged, untransformed. And so they are not born again. So these wayside seeds or hearts are not born again because the seed did not have will to germinate hallelujah so the birds came and hit those seeds the birds there represent satan now when people hear the word and satan comes and it's not sown it's not received it's not internalized hallelujah we have to internalize his word <laughs> we have to receive his word and god knows when the word has been received because the spirit of the Lord knows and because he starts to bear the fruit that God himself intended hallelujah praise Jesus wayside seeds wayside hearts Matthew 13 19 When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then, the, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which is sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. So the enemy comes and steals it. That's why people are not transformed. They're not born again. But they can tell you you know, they can quote Genesis to Revelation. But they are not yet saved. They haven't gone through the redemption. And I believe in this place we, are, we have been washed by the blood. But if there's anyone who has not been saved, this is the best time to say, Lord, I want your seed in my heart. Amen. I want to be fruitful. 
Yes, I want to be transformed. Yeah, I want to come into that experiential knowledge. I want to come into truth. I want to, you to come into in my heart and dine with me. I want to be fruitful. I want to be fruitful. I am genuine with what I have received. And I am ready, Lord, to serve, to believe, so that you can change me. Hallelujah. The seed on the stony ground. Hallelujah. Can someone read, please? Matthew 13, 5 to 6. Hallelujah. So those are the seeds that fell on the stony ground. And because they had no root. Thank you, Dick Ness Stacy. They withered away. And like I said, God sows even though people don't care. <laughs> we are living in a nation that majority of the people don't care anymore about God's work. You know, majority, they don't care about God's works anymore. Stony places. So we see that people initially respond to the gospel, but the seed itself has not made its way pass into the heart. And so they leave unconverted. And sometimes it can also be bitterness and resentment that can block the seed from going in. Praise God. And that's why we have to let go of bitterness. We have to let go of resentment. We have to let go of unforgiveness. Because that can block the seed from getting in. A man who has been bitter about being cheated on. A woman who has been bitter about divorce as she suffered. A woman who has been bitter, a man who has been bitter, resentment. And because what the enemy does, we empower the enemy when he sees his agents, agents in our hearts, his minions in our hearts. When he sees that, we empower him and he uses that to, to cause a stranglehold on our heart so that we the person will not be able to receive light into their heart. So there's anyone in this place? Say, Lord, I'm letting go of bitterness. Yes, he offended me. Yes, she offended me. But I'm letting go of bitterness. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to allow anyone to make me miss my passion in Christ Jesus. I love the Lord more than the bitterness. I love the Lord more than the hurt that that person cursed me yes I want to present myself before the Lord righteously living for him and not nursing the resentment hallelujah praise Jesus these things are very very important because as we start to let go then transformation begins where the will of God is known hallelujah transformation begins where the will of God is known once you know that this is the will of God concerning you you just have to let go and then that transformation begins from there hallelujah and we can serve God truly and acceptably before him and every sacrifice that we bring unto him he accepts it yeah it becomes when God says when we worship him it's like a sweet smelling savor but there are people who had worshipped him in the Bible days and they were struck and they never made it because they offered strange fire before the Lord hallelujah so when the will of God is known that is where our transformation begins from because the what the desire of God is that we can grow in light so that we can want to reveal him in light. Bible says God dwell in light, unapproachable light. 
but he brings us to approach it because he loves us so that we can reveal him hallelujah so lastly the turn seed and some fell among thorns you can Stacy, can you read please matthew 13 7 and then matthew 13 22 so he also that received seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this word and the deceitfulness of riches shook the word and become unfruitful. The cares of this word meaning a divided mind. A divided mind. You know, when you take the word vision and then you take the word division, if you take the DI away from vision, division, you get vision. Yeah. So, there's a parallel line between vision and division. Hallelujah. So, die means there's already two vision. Yeah. And that is why when you are married, you're supposed to have one vision in the home. You know, division comes because now there is two vision trying to coexist. <laughs> yeah. So, the cares of this world is when people have a divided mind, you know, they are not here and they are not there. They are trying to do this and trying to do that. It takes away their focus from the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. Our desire is like, Lord, I just, I want you more than anything else. I need you more than anything else. My gaze, my focus is on you more than anything else. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we begin to talk about the will of God. That we are transformed where the will of God is known. The will of God can be sometimes bitter to our taste, but it's sweet in our stomach. The will of man is sweet to taste, but it's bitter when it gets in. So we have to go with the will of the Lord, even though it might not be convenient, but yet it's going to bring forth fruit. In I, I will conclude now with this now. Now there's the seed that fell on the good, good ground, on the good soil. Hallelujah. There is the seed. And you are the seed that fell on the good soil. Hallelujah. Say, I am the seed that fell on the good soil. Yes. And in Israel, they measure a good um, harvest. If it is tenfold, if you get tenfold back in Israel, it's a very good harvest. It's a fruitful year. But you see, when God measures harvest, it, it starts from 30. So God gets 30, he gets 60, and he gets 100. So it means that no matter what the, 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 the fight, the contention against God's word, God still gets harvest. Hallelujah. No matter the resistance we're having in Ireland today, I've been here since 2003, the resistance is, is high there. But no matter the resistance, God is saying, I'm still going to get my harvest. You know? Hallelujah. He will get his harvest, and it is from 30. So if Israel can measure 10 as, wow, how much more God. So God says, I'm going to begin from 30 to show that here I might be a little haphazard in spreading the seed where some fell on hearts that don't even care about my word, but I'm still going to get harvest. And it's going to be what? Plentiful. Hallelujah. And it's going to abound. Hallelujah. Unto all fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Let's stand up on our feet.